It is Friday, April 19th, and the Splash Zone is back in your life. I am Matt Modi, and I have three NBA player props for you guys to lock in for tomorrow's NBA betting slate. That's what I'm talking about. Tomorrow's slate of the uh, first round of the NBA playoffs. Three player props to lock in, and then I will have an underdog entry at the very end as well, just combining all three of my plays. So four plays total, but in reality, three NBA player props. I'm recording these before uh, tonight's Friday's games. Are played so I don't have a recap from Friday to give you, but I can recap how the first two days of the playing games went. They were fine, uh, 0.14 units of profit overall. That does include a quarter unit that I lost on an underdog entry. So for those of you that don't play those or that just can't play them in a state, you are up a little bit more than what you see on the screen here. Despite our win-loss record, two of our lower plays in terms of unit sizes were the ones that lost. So that's kind of why you're able to see green despite the record here. Me uh, mediocre results the past two days of the play-in, but on the season, anything but mediocre results up just under the 110 unit of profit mark, just under 19, or excuse me, just under 20% ROI with a pretty good win-loss record as well. When you consider the majority of the plays that we do play are considered, not are considered, they are plus money bangers. So let's hope we can continue the sec success into the playoffs. Nice Freudian slip there. Uh, success into the playoffs last year. I had a phenomenal run in the playoffs, so I'm hoping to replicate that. If you are not already, I would appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button to my YouTube channel. And then for this specific video, let me know what you think of the three plays that I have. And if there are any that you like, go ahead and put those in the comments. I love reading through the comments. But that's enough of that. You're only as good as your most recent bangers. So let's hope we can splash around and continue to get wet tomorrow, starting in the Lakers versus Nuggets game. And I'm taking uh, Michael Porter Jr. over three and a half first quarter points, minus 120 odds at bet 365. Normally when I am giving out these NBA player props and trying to target a specific matchup or injury news, stuff like that, really no matchup play here or no injury news here from Michael Porter Jr. He just consistently scores more in the first quarter and then he slows down as the game goes on. And it's not really something that the books have caught up to yet. We're still getting this price at three and a half, which I think is crazy. Even at the minus 120 odds, I think the uh, I think the uh, play here is phenomenal. If I had to give a guess about why Michael Porter Jr. scores more in the first quarter, it's um, not a guess, but they do play, they do give him more shot attempts. They run more plays specifically for Marco, Michael Porter Jr. in the first quarter. My guess as to why they do that is so they can keep him engaged both on the defensive end and on the rebounding end as well. You generally see this a lot with defensive-minded uh, first defensive type of centers that get a lot of plays run for them in the beginning of the game in the first quarter. And it's just to keep them engaged on the defensive end. So I'm guessing it's something similar here with the Nuggets who have turned Michael Porter Jr. I'll give him credit into a pretty good team defender. He still can't quite move his hips quickly enough to be a good one-on-one -on -one defender, but he's really good with rotations and sticking to shooters and stuff like that. So my guess here, and again, this is just a total guess, is that they run more plays for him in the first quarter to keep him engaged on that end, which is not a guess is that he does score significantly more points in the first quarter than he does the rest of the game. That is not an argument. That is just a fact based on the season. He's scored four more points in seven of the last 10 games he's played, in 11 of the last 15 games he's played, in 25 of the last 30 games he's played. And if you look at the entire season, he scored four or more points in the first quarter in 56 of 81 games. That is literally a 70% hit rate. And I just don't think that the books have adequately priced first quarter lines. All they do is just divide their total points by four and make that their first quarter prop. And it just doesn't take into account guys like Michael Porter Jr. that score more in the first quarter than the rest of the game. And even if you look at two of the games that he missed recently, uh, they were the last two games of the regular season. They played the Spurs and the Grizzlies in that game. Understandably, the intensity wasn't quite there for those games. But if you look at specifically how he has performed against the Lakers, he's cashed this in all three games against the Lakers this year. And he cashed it in four of six games, specifically last year as well. In those six games, that does include the playoffs. So all three this year, four of six, including the playoffs last year. So it's not like the Lakers are a tough matchup for him or anything like that. And I just think he's going to make a three-pointer and he's going to make another bucket or he'll get fouled and he'll make two two-pointers, something like that. But I'm very confident that he's going to go over the one and a half, excuse me, the three and a half first quarter number as our first play. Next up, Suns versus Timberwolves game. I'm taking Anthony Edwards over five and a half rebounds, minus 105 odds at DraftKings. So I admit I put this play out first on my Dub Club. You guys are able to get it for those of you that are on my Dub Club at plus 104 odds. 
right before I started recording, I checked the best offer price here is minus 105, which I would still take at this number. And I just think this is a really good spot for Anthony Edwards and his rebound prop against the Suns. I think it's a good spot for three reasons. Number one, I love the matchup individually against the Suns. Number two, heightened playoff atmosphere means more engaged, just in general, higher effort plays from Anthony Edwards. And then number three, he's going to play, presumably going to play more minutes in a playoff game as well. Now, the most important thing that you can actually attribute to are, is, is the matchup against the Suns. And generally, it's teams that shoot a lot of jump shots, which the Suns do, that leads to more rebounds to guards as opposed to rebounds to center. It makes sense for a bunch of reasons. Number one, the farther the shot is away from the basket, the farther it careems off the rim, which means it leads to opportunity to rebound opportunities to guys that are farther away from the rim, which is normally guards and wings as opposed to uh, centers. And I think part of the Suns strategy against the Timberwolves is to get Rudy Gobert out of the paint, run him in pick and rolls, make him guard space, and then shoot from there. And with Anthony, uh, excuse me, Rudy Gobert out of the paint, that leads to more rebound opportunities for guys like Anthony Edwards. If you look at his last two games against the Suns, he has gone over this five and a half rebound number with eight rebounds and six rebounds. The only game he missed was at the beginning of the season, these two teams played back in November. He only had four rebounds in that game. He also only played 30 minutes, whereas the two games recently that he went over, those were both played in April. I put a lot more stock in what happens in April than I do what happens in November, especially when you consider the fact that even though this is a game one, the Timberwolves are going to play Anthony Edwards heavy minutes. He's a young guy and his legs can handle it. My guess here is that he's going to play probably 40 minutes, but unless there's a blowout or he gets injured, he's at minimum going to play 36 minutes. Now, I think he'll play more. He'll at least play the 36 minute number. And if you just isolate it to games in which he's played 36 or more minutes, He's gone over five and a half rebounds in 25 of 40 games. That's a hit rate of 63%. And he's just going to be trying harder because it's the playoffs. That's also a part of it, which that's a, that's a small part of it. You can't really put a number or a sign of value to that. But take into account the matchup and the fact that he's going to play higher minutes. I love this play for Anthony Edwards as our second play. Let's hope it comes through for us. And our last play of the evening, this is in the 76ers versus Knicks game. I'm taking Jalen Brunson, eight plus assists plus 125 odds at DraftKings. So this is another play that I first gave out on Dub Club and you guys were able to get a better price. I locked it in at plus 135. Similar to the Edwards play, right before I started recording, I checked to see what it was priced at. Priced at plus 125, which I would still take at that number. Now Brunson's point total is all the way up to 30 and a half in this game. He could easily clear that. I like the angle for his assists a lot better. For starters, he's playing, been playing really well from an assist perspective recently. And if you isolate it to games in which he's played with OG and Anobi and without Julius Randle, it's even better. Now I understand that is a relatively low sample size, but it has been nine games. And in those nine games, he averages over about 13 potential assists per game and seven actual assists. So it's one actual assist lower than the number we need him to get. But those 13 potential assists per game, that's a replicatable number that I really like. And if you look at three of the games, so he's gone over in six of nine games without these two. In three of the games that he missed, he scored 45, 42, and 39 points, which he's always a threat to do that. Jalen Brunson is an awesome, awesome scorer, an awesome basketball player. But against the Sixers, his scoring has been down and his playmaking has been up. Now I'll get, I'll get into that in a little bit. But the last point I want to make here before I get into that is that even if you take out the Julius Randle factor and you just look at games in which he's played with OG and Anobi, he's cashed eight or more assists in 14 of 23 games. That's a 61% hit rate. Now, if you do look at the games that he's played specifically against the Sixers and you don't care about any other splits, he's cashed eight or more assists in each of the last three games that he's played against the Sixers. The only game he missed it was the first game that he played against them. The last three he went over. And in those uh, four games, he had 10 potential assists, which isn't great. Then he had 20, which is phenomenal, 12 and 12. I just, the way the Sixers play defense, they're not going to let him get single coverage. They're not going to let uh, Jalen Brunson kill them from a scoring perspective. They're going to send a lot of different looks at him and they're going to sell out to stop him. Part of that uh, type of style of defense that Nick Nurse plays does leave to aggressive double teams and does leave to open shooters or if jo Joel Embiid sells out to stop Brunson from scoring, that leaves to an open Isaiah Hartenstein or Mitchell Robinson on the pick and roll to score. 
So I do think that there is a lot of matchup reasons why Jalen Brunson, even, even in the games that Embiid hasn't played, just in the matchup against the Sixers, cashed eight or more assists in three of those four games. So for the plus 125 number that we're able to get it at at DraftKings, I think is really good. Those are our three bangers for this uh, NBA betting slate on Saturday's NBA betting slate. The uh, underdog entry that I have that you see on the screen here, it's the same three plays that I already gave out. The difference here is that Brunson assists is at seven as opposed to seven and a half. Now, if it lands on exactly seven, that play will just get refunded. And let's pretend the other two hit and that doesn't, then it would just calculate the parlay as a two leg as opposed to a three leg. Because I think he goes over, I think it does make sense to get it at the seven assist number that underdog is offering. 25 bucks to win 150, equivalent of plus 600 odds um, for all three. And if you're located in the state where you can use underdog, but you don't have it, I would appreciate it if you do sign up, use my sign up link as I did partner with them. And there are benefits to using underdog. It's the fixed payout ratio. So you're able to get pretty good prices on parlays. And you're also able to get entries considered parlays that uh, sports books like FanDuel DraftKings don't offer. So definitely recommend downloading Underdog if you are not already, if you don't already have it. And then of course, using my signup link would help me out a ton. And that's all we got. Three bangers plus an Underdog entry for you guys to lock in. Make sure to like the video, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And the last thing that I'll mention, I've mentioned it a couple of times in the video, is that I do have a dub club where I send all my plays out um, immediately as soon as I decide what a play is. The first thing I do is send it out to the dub club. It's the same exact plays that you see me give out on YouTube and on Twitter. You just get them early before the odds change. I only uh, charge five bucks a month for it because you can get everything for free. It's just for the people that either don't want to watch the videos, don't have time, or would rather get everything early. If you'd rather just pay the best price of free, stick to YouTube and Twitter is totally fine with me. I just like to give people the option, and that's all we got. Appreciate everybody for watching and have a good one.